Hey, welcome back. Welcome back, folks, to this edition of the Pesky Podcast. Man, do I have an extensive podcast for you today on IPM. What the heck is IPM? And why, after 50 years, nobody still knows what the heck it is? You know, I had uh, an interesting, I was at PMU, uh, Pest Management University, uh, this past week, which I was taking the introduction to termite management, of course. And um, there was Joe Jonovich, which was one of the teachers there, um, and also uh, Faith Oy. Now, I follow Faith Oy. She doesn't know I follow her. She doesn't know I'm a fan, but I'm a huge fan. Um, she writes a lot of stuff pertinent to us. Uh, here in South Florida, and along with Dean E.S. Miller, um, I've read, you know, most of my protocols for German roach management and German roach control um, is derived from their material. I mean, I took their material a long time ago, studied it, and um, we we designed a integrated pest management program, which I internally call, by the way, we have a different name for it internally. We have what is known as biological pest control, and it's biologically based pest control. Uh, the, the reason we coined it that is we took the biology of the insect and we based our protocols around the biology, which is integrated pest management. So, I'm asking the question, what is integrated pest management? And if I ask this to every technician that I meet on the road, I would say 80 to 90% of the technicians that I actually meet on the road, across from large companies, small companies, independents, and I asked them, what's IPM? I would get probably 10 different definitions of what IPM is, okay? Then, after I get 10 to 100 different definitions of what IPM is, I say, are you implementing? Absolutely. Well, what is IPM? And most of us says, well, it's about chemical rotation, right? Uh, no. Um, chemical rotation is part of any sound pest control management. And here's the problem. When I ask them about how they're rotating their chemical, they're basically rotating within the same class. Well, I'm switching from demon over to bifenthrin. Well, wait a minute. You're not rotating your chemical, you're just rotating the brand and the active ingredient, but you're not rotating the class. So reality is you're still not performing chemical rotation, much less IPM. We got a huge problem in our industry, folks. Since 1972, where Jimmy Carter introduced the term into Congress, and it became official that integrated pest management is the law of the land after that. We still have no idea what it is. Here's the worst part. Neither do our customers. I ask every single customer that calls us, do you know what we do? That's, my, that's how I open up my, my phone conversation with them. Oh, I want you to come and spray my house for bugs. I want you to perform a fumigation. I want you to fumigate. I want you to come and exterminate. Those are the four top words. The top being spray and fumigation. Why fumigation? Because we have a huge Hispanic market, 65% is market. And what they know in their country as pest control is fumigation, where the guy comes in literally with a thermal fogger and fogs the entire house with a thermal fogger. This is a plot. This is used in Central and South America. As a matter of fact, it is used all over the un- you know, um, developing nations, let's call it. That's what it's called now, developing nations. Africa, you still go in and you fumigate the whole house. You don't use fumes. You're actually using fogging, but the term fumigation is synonymous with that. And here's the problem. It is ingrained in the culture. It is in everybody's vocabulary. And what we've done to change the vocabulary of Americans to integrated pest management to from spraying. And what, give me a second here. I lost my battery on my computer. And I'm going to get into a very extensive 
study. Here we go. All right. Of this and understanding that nobody knows what the heck real pest control is. Now we get into green pest management. And now we get into organic and natural. And now there is a whole animosity towards this from the industry itself, primarily the old timers, the spray and pray guys. Why is it called spray and pray? Well, because you spray and you pray it's going to control the bugs. We call them, they have a name in the industry called baseboard jockeys. And here is the problem. There is an enormous amount of clients in the U.S. that if you do not spray their baseboards, you did not perform pest control. So you're basically in a no-win situation because the customer doesn't, the customer tells you how to spray their house for bugs. When you have the customer telling a professional how pest control is going to be performed, we're in deep trouble because they think they know what pest control is. So I asked my client, do you know what we do? Inevitably, 100% say, well, you kill bugs. You use natural products. I like that. I said, well, let me explain to you what it is that we do. Because, yes, we do. We have more natural programs probably than anybody in our area. I wouldn't say the state, but I would say in our area. We have 100% natural mosquito service where we use ATSBs. That's attracting toxic sugar baits. Uh, we use Final Feed. Before that, we were using Terminex product. It was labeled under the Terminex brand. Now it's labeled under Catchmaster, and it's been improved and modified. And we use that. We've been using that now going on three years. Nobody knows about this. But it gets better controlled than spraying by fentanyl. That's for sure. And combined with IGRs, we get almost 100% natural because in most yards, we don't have to use the IGR. We only have to use it where there's standing water and plants. We have 100% flea and tick service. We got 100% lawn spray service for flea and tick outside. That is 100% natural, 25B exempt. We have 100% shrub spray. That is 25B exempt. So that's five services because flea and ticks are two different. And we treat them a little differently. Indoor, we can actually treat crack and crevice and deal with ticks with 25B. Now, what can't we control? We can't control ants. Not really, especially not tramp ants. Why are they called tramp ants? I have a whole podcast on that. Go listen to my video on tramp ants. I have a whole training on that. You really can't control German roach infestations. And you're definitely not going to control an American cockroach infestation with 25 bees. So why do you call yourself nature pest? Well, because originally the thought of nature pest was that we protect nature. And we kill pests. See, that was the whole marketing, which probably didn't turn out so well. Because now everybody thinks that we're natural, which we do. And we're incorporating, we were one of the first to buy all the lines when it was eco smart and then the Accenture line and then the eco via line we bought every single line and we implemented it and we tried it we also use a lot more products than nobody's ever heard of in the industry because they're mostly for ag but they're labeled for residential and they're used basically in agriculture where they're actually spraying crops with 25b products getting enormous results a company is called jb jh biotech they're out of california well, of course, they're out of California because all natural companies should be out of California. So getting back to what is IPM and why nobody knows about it. I, I you know, I, I, I sat with uh, Joe. We're going to discuss this. I sat with Joe Jonovich and I sat with Faith Loy for dinner after the whole um, class training was done. And we had a great conversation. We were probably there for a good two and a half, three hours, having a very fruitful conversation 
Uh, but she, I love what she said to me. And she just came right at me and asked me the question. She says, why doesn't anybody know what IPM is? And I had an instant answer. The instant answer is IPM isn't marketable. And nobody in the industry, nobody knows what it is. So if nobody knows what it is in the industry as a whole, and nobody is versed in it, and nobody is practicing it, well, I shouldn't say nobody, because I know somebody's going to take this 10-second snapshot and take it out of context. As Frank said, nobody's practicing IPM. Look, we're practicing IPM. I'm going to show you they're practicing IPM. But here's the thing. It's on the institutional level, on the, on the high-end commercial side not on the low-end residential. And what we decided to do when I launched Nature Pest, my company, is that we're, we created, because I spent nine years researching and trying to develop an integrated pest management program. First of all, for our ecology, for our weather, and for the pests that we have down here. So it is biology-based. It's, we looked at a holistic, and I call it holistic pest control. And this is the term I think we're going to coin is holistic pest control. Why? Because we take a look at the whole. We take a look at who the customer is and what they're demanding. What is it that they're expecting and want? And we have to deal with the psychological and emotional and financial and then we have to deal with the practical. What is their home like? A new cinder block home is a whole lot different than an old cinder block home with a crawl space and a septic tank. And then we have to look at what's around us. Water, lakes, streams. We're surrounded by small ponds. I mean, most people here are like, you don't have lakes. you got drainage ditches. Those are not lakes. Well, they're lakes to the customer. They're bodies of water which are protected. We have to look at the pest. We got to look at the plants in relationship to the pest because we've got an enormous amount of shrubbery and we have an enormous amount of hemeptera pests, piercing, sucking insects that produce honeydew on plants and excrete honeydew, which is extremely attractive because it is almost pure sugar to ant insects. Then we have the sooty mold issue on the plant. And we have to look at this holistic environment. Then we got to look at their pets and their children. And they're concerned about, is the chemical going to affect my pets? And what do most people say? Products are completely safe if applied according to label directions, according to the EPA. The EPA doesn't say anything about that. People are repeating stuff that they've heard other people say, and they've never researched it. So I want to get into this study, and I want you to show you what it is that we're dealing with. And let me look at my screen here because I've got these new contacts that are just amazing. These contacts, I have one eye so I can read close up and then I have the other eye so I can see from far because they were going to do the ones where around and I had to look and it messes up driving at night, peripheral. And it was just, so I'm trying to adjust my eyes to this. But let's look at integrated pest management. We're going to take it straight from the horse's mouth and we're going to look at integrated pest management from what it is from the people that basically are in charge of developing it. What is IPM? Look at the top of your screen. From the EPA, my thing is going to block it because I got my little thing there. But uh, I'm going to go ahead. Let me see if I can bring this over to the side. And... That do this so that you can actually, yeah, why don't we do that? Whoa, too far. Okay, a little, yeah, right there. That's good enough. All right. Now I'm going to read from my page. Integrated pest management, IPM, is an effective and environmentally sensitive approach to pest management that relies on a combination of common sense practices Whoa, 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 stop, stop. Let's take a look at this. First of all, it's an approach to pest management. Here's the biggest problem that you have with the term. 
management. There isn't a, co a customer on the planet that understands that their pests are going to be managed. I don't want my pets managed. I want them dead. If I want them managed, I would have put them through a course. I don't want them managed. I want them dead. So pest management in itself, which is what we really do, we manage the pest populations to bring them down to a point where they're no longer a nuisance. And the idea, the customer has extermination in mind. The term used way back when, which means to completely obliterate. And when we tell the customer, well, we're not exterminator, we're pest management people. We don't want to be called exterminators. Because exterminators is just like really low end. We're pest management professionals. We are PMP, pest management professionals. That's what we are. So we don't want to be called exterminators. We don't want to be called the bug guy. My bug sprayer is coming today to exterminate my bugs. I don't want that guy. I don't want to be that guy. We have this romanticism about what things should be, and they're not. Second of all, it says it relies on a, common, a combination of common sense practices. Common sense to who? Because if I asked people, are they practicing IPM? They're telling me they're rotating chemicals and they're rotating between bifenthrin and deltamethrin. Is that common sense? That's the common sense. The common sense to who? The client? Where the client is expecting the guy to come in and spray something. And if he doesn't, she gets mad. Because he didn't perform. And he just came and looked around with a flashlight. And put this little thing in the corner. And he didn't treat a darn thing. And he charged me $120 a quarter to come do this. He charged me $85 every two months. And he didn't treat a darn thing. Well, according to IPM, that's what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to treat if there isn't a problem. What we tell our clients is, listen, once we get rid of that, we get control of that situation in the home. We're going to maintain it from outside. Why? Because all bugs come in from the outside. There is no bugs coming out of your home outside to invade the environment. Now, once we get rid of that bug and we get rid of the infestation, we have to use chemicals. Now, what do we do? The lowest risk product, the lowest impact product, the lowest product with the lowest toxicity and risk to exposure. That's what we are practicing in IPM. And we resolve... 99% of the problems inside a home, 99, I'm, I'm not kidding you, with nothing more than baits and IGR. And we don't even spray the IGR because we use point source. So now we tell the client, once we get rid of it, we only have to do the maintenance outside. Do we have to use chemicals outside to do the maintenance? Yes, because if we don't pass pressure when you have big head and hand, within 30 days, it says, well, you should only treat if you have a problem, well, we're only going to treat inside if we have a problem. Because if we manage it outside, and that is the term manage, because we are constantly going back and, and adjusting the protocol with baits and liquid combinations around the perimeter of that home to keep that pest barrier five feet from that home, keep that pest away five feet from that home so they're not constantly invading the structure. Now we're sealing outside and we're finding all the areas where the cable guy left that hole through the wall, where the contractor didn't, you know, seal around that pipe he installed. The air conditioning guy who came and left all the conduit open in, in, a, in a channel that a rat can go up and climb up into the attic. We seal all that. So we try to perform all the sealing we can so that we never have to apply a chemical on the inside of that home. And usually it's about a 5%. We got about a 95% success rate to 94% success rate where we rarely have to apply anything to the inside of a home after we've cleaned it out. Maybe once or twice a year, we got to go inside a home 
and deal with it. So we're performing integrated pest management, but it's not common sense. We have to explain all this to you. You mean you're not going to spray my house every time you come? No, we're never going to spray your house. As a matter of fact, we have a strict zero spray policy for indoor unless that is based on the protocol and that is the only way. And it's successful 99% of the time. Say, well, you don't understand where I live. You couldn't do that. Well, have you tried? Chances are no. So it says it's a combination of common sense practices. IPM programs use current comprehensive information on the life cycle of the pests and their interaction with the environment. This is why we went with biologically based. This information in combination with available pest control methods used to manage pest damage by the most economical means with the least possible hazard to people, property, and the environment. Wait a minute. Here is the disconnect. Because IPM is not the most economical means. As a matter of fact, it is on, a sh on the initial, it is more expensive. This is why we charge two to three times more than our competitors because we have to do two to three times more work initially than they do through IPM. The, and then the most economical means, which is the least possible hazard to people, property, and the environment. People, property, and the environment. It's a holistic approach. It takes everyone. Here's the thing. Most people could not care less about the environment. Now, listen to me carefully. It isn't that they say, let's go pollute the environment. Is that they're not going to say, well, I'm not going to pay an enormous amount to a certain extent because this might pollute somehow the environment. It's I care about my home. The inside of my home is the most important environment where my kids are, where my pets are, where we're spending as COVID people. The majority of our life now is indoors. If you're not indoors at work, most people are indoors at work or they're indoors at home. Protecting that indoor air quality and surfaces is our number one priority. IPM can be applied to both agriculture and non-agricultural settings, just as, as the home, garden, and workplace. IPM takes advantage of all the appropriate pest management options, including but not limited to judicious use of pesticides. In contrast, organic food production applies many of the same concepts as IPM, but limits the use of pesticide to those that are produced from natural sources as opposed to synthetic chemicals. So that is the official description of what IPM is according to the EPA. Here is the problem. IPM takes advantage of all the appropriate pest management options. Well, here's the, the disconnect. When it comes to the industry, no, we don't. We created a protocol that is designed to maximize production, maximize revenue, and therefore maximize returns. Every discussion, whether it's Paul Bello, Bobby Corrigan, Faith Oy, Dini Miller, the inspectors like Mitola say you have to give the technician the right amount of time to perform the work, make the observations in observational pest management. And what does 90% of the industry do? They go in and apply a chemical. So there's a disconnect between the academia and the industry as a whole. And then you have the National Pest Management Association in the middle, which we're going to discuss on that. So when we, we go here and we take that, it says, okay, so we agree that the, the, the environmental standard by the EPA is IPM. Well, who else agrees? Well, let's go to healthcare. Let's see if I go here. I'm going to make that a little bigger. 
And this is Healthcare Facilities Management Magazine. This is the magazine that if you own a healthcare facility, hospital, this is what you're reading. Healthcare facility specific SPAS management. Now, what does it say? Let's go down here. Healthcare facilities come in more varieties and serve a wider array of functions than ever. Nursing homes, assisted living facilities play a much different role than doctor offices and clinics. Outpatient centers and hospitals can be more different than they are alike. And that's just from looking at the patients these facilities serve. When looking at the operations at these facilities, the variances are even starker, but some differences are a bit more subtle. When it comes to pest control in healthcare, for instance, one strategy doesn't fit all. Each facility is different and different environments feature hotspots with different pest issues. While integrated pest management, IPM, has become the healthcare industry standard, see sidebar page 42, pest management programs can and should look differently depending on the facility. Pests themselves can be quite different and many pose different threats. So in other words, this is the standard IPM in healthcare facilities. However, how it is implemented tactically is going to depend on the structure, on the past, on the people. It's a holistic approach. If you take a holistic approach, you can develop an IPM program for that facility. In one facility, it may be done a little differently. It can't be done the same everywhere. But IPM in a hospital is like a surgeon's tools where the surgeon has hundreds of tools he needs to use, and every patient is different, and every surgery is different. So he has to decide as a professional how he's going to implement it. Here's the problem. How many people treat a home like they treat a healthcare facility? This is the question I asked myself about 10 or 11 years ago when I said, how, if you are going to do, you can't do organic because you can't do organic in homes, how would you do it, Frank? And, and here's a guy who did not grow up in the pest control. I was not trained. I was not ruined <laughs> by the industry to think the way they think. I thought outside the box. And I said, how would I do it? What is the most sensitive place that I could think of in my ignorance at that time? And said, aha, a hospital surgical room. How the heck would we solve that? And I started doing research because all the information is out there of how it is performed. Back then, it was cracking crevice was the big thing. You know, we don't even do cracking crevice anymore. About 1% of the time do we do cracking crevice. We do surgical centers. We do organic facilities that are certified organic. So this is, while integrated pest management themselves can be quite different. Flies, ants, cockroaches are most common pests found in healthcare facilities. Guess what? It's also the most common in homes. So the question is, why aren't we treating every home with the same care? IPM is the standard in public schools. Here is, let me bring this down here so that you can see it. Aha. The Florida's IPM Industry Task Force has developed best management practice tailored for Florida pest control, uh, pest conditions. They are intended to help you design an, an integrated pest management program for your school. And those are the best management practices there. So if it's the standard in schools where children are spending their entire day, my question is, why isn't it the standard in homes? I'm going to keep asking questions that are kind of redundant and stupid. All right, so now we get into, is it safe for, uh, is your program safe for our children? And I get this all the time because this is what people are concerned about. And I said, well, our process is what is recommended by the pediatric, the American um, Association of, of Pediatrics. Now I forget the exact name, the Academy of Pediatrics. And reducing exposure to pest and pesticides in family child care homes. If you look down here, 
it says to reduce young children's exposure to pests and pesticide, an integrated pest management intervention was developed and pilot tested for family child care home providers. So we went ahead and we said, well, what is it? And we said, okay, and we developed it. We treat every home the same way. We have that approach to every home. This is what we offer our clients. We're not selling juju juice here. So now it says, well, is this safe for my pets? Of course it is. Well, not if you're spray sport spraying. According to the AVMA, integrated pest management, and according to integrated pest management standards, baseboard spraying every single month to home is not considered safe. That's not me saying it. That's them saying it. The AVMA supports science-based integrated pest management programs and practices by pest management professionals, veterinarians and their clients, and by the general public. IPM is a component of One Health. IPM includes the coordinated use of, of pest and environmental information along with the available pest control methods, physical, structural, mechanical, biological, chemical, to prevent unacceptable damage by pest and pesticide and pest and, and pesticide resistance while minimizing the risk to people, animals, and the environment, non-target species, and property. So baseboard spraying every month isn't IPM, isn't environmentally sound. That's not what it is. So if the A the, the pediatric, the Academy of Pediatric recommends it. The AVMA, I ask people, have you spoken to the American Veterinary Association about the right pest control? I, I just basically put seeds of thoughts in my client's mind to get them to think. So now, the, um, the American Academy of Allergy and Asthma, my kids have allergies and asthma. I was actually part of a study for three years that dealt with this. Well, asthma is a complex and highly prevalent disease that causes substantial morbidity. Morbidity. Exposure to cockroaches in the home is related to severe asthma outcomes and reducing exposure to cockroaches is an important asthma management strategy. Wait a minute. Controlling asthma has to do with controlling roaches, yes. Integrated pest management is the recommended strategy for cockroach control. However, here it is. It is costly and difficult to implement. Control studies have shown that using insecticidal bait alone may be an effective alternative to IPM. The impact of reducing cockroach on asthma outcome has been studied. We did this. We took all of the studies that were out there that used bait only, and we went into the inner city HUD. And we controlled roaches very effectively for over three years on a pilot pro on a program. So, is IPM spraying for roaches? No. Is integrating bait and bait alone can get rid of a German cockroach infestation in a home? Yes. And there will people tell me, well, it can't be done. Well, I have three years, 88 properties that we did over three years where we were there on a monthly basis. Initially, we were there weekly, getting rid of that roach population and then being there once a month maintaining it, and we maintained it. We, we did it for six months, and then we stopped, and we came back a year and a half later, and, and it was completely reinfested again because we only did a, a limited sample. So according to the American Academy of Allergy and Asthma and Immunology, Asthma and Immunology, IPM is the standard or should be the standard for doing this. And according to them, the studies show that beta alone, and I'll stand behind that. So now we have Food Safety Magazine. Oh, wait, this is for restaurant people. Integrated pest management procedures to prevent food safety, to protect food safety, I'm sorry. Let's go with this. Let me bring this up a little 
higher so that you can read it because they got all this advertising going on on the side and then the content is sandwiched. Pest management is a critical component of food safety program worldwide, production facilities as well as food retail facilities and restaurants are all at risk of attracting pests and rodents, cockroaches, ants, birds, due to a large part of the heavy nature of their business, which is food, which is what these guys are looking for. These facilities provide ideal conditions for many pests and need, need to thrive, food, water, and shelter. Those are the basic things. So if a restaurant, if IPM is good enough for a healthcare facility, for a, it's good enough for a, a, a um, hotel, it's good enough for the AVMA, it's good enough for the Allergy and Asthma Foundation, why isn't it good enough for your home? You know what most people tell me? People aren't going to allow me to do that. They're not going to pay for it because we already determined that, yeah, it is more costly initially. Down the road, the cost is about the same as a regular maintenance, maybe about 20 to 30% higher. Why aren't people going to allow you to do that? Because people are ignorant of this and it's all available and they don't read it because no customer is reading the EPA. No customer is reading a hotel magazine. No customer is reading a medical facilities magazine unless they're in that field and that is their job. And even then when I walk into restaurants and hotels and I talk to the managers about their IPM program, they look at me like I got a third eye. When Faith Oi asked me, why isn't IPM known? It's because nobody knows about it. Let's get a little further into this. Hotel and catering. Effective pest control in the hospitality industry. Becker World Holdings CEO Michael Bayon speaks about how hoteliers can tackle the issue of pest management. The hotel industry is booming. Flow of guests, employees, and good uh, and goods coming in and out of constantly raising and triggering a higher risk of exposure to pests. Why? They're bringing them in. The food is coming in. Boxes are coming in. Materials are coming in. And people are coming in. In a competitive environment where reputation is the utmost important hotel, hotels place a very high standards on guest experience. Any sign of a pest infestation is detrimental to business, such as proactive pest management is crucial to providing clean, safe, and hygienic environment for our customers. Proactive pest management. What do most people call us? When the pests have already infested their home because they went out and they bought pills and they bought gel and then they bought foggers and they bought dust and they put boric acid everywhere and they took DE and spread it all over their home. That's when they call a professional. You know why? Because these guys have professionals on staff. They have to. The average customer in America, 80% of people will do their own pest control, and they're doing it wrong. Only 20%, this is by according to Orkin, only about 20% of homeowners ever use a professional pest control company. And then now those 20% are using a company, and they're not using IPM. Do you see the problem of why nobody knows about IPM? Because no, everybody's going over to the big box store, to Home Depot, Lowe's, to Ace, and they're buying what's over the counter, and they think that because they applied this. Because after all, I can spray a baseboard too. I mean, it's not that hard. Due to the large size complexity of hotels and high turnover of food and guests, it is essential to provide high quality services in a very efficient manner. Integrated pest management, IPM, is a fast and effective strategy to resolve pest related challenges. Hotels are the ideal place to apply IPM for three reasons. It is an advanced, logical, and effective method of, method of reducing pest problems. It minimizes exposure to chemicals and satisfies many customers and staff who prefer hotels demonstrate environmental awareness. 
There it is. If it's good enough for a hotel, my question is, why isn't it good enough for your home? Well, let's look at the cost. Cost and efficacy comparison of integrated pest management strategies with monthly spray insecticide application for German cockroach. This is by Dini Miller and F. Meek. I, I really don't know who F. Meek is, but I like to know him. When you look at the cost, the average cost per apartment unit was $14.60, where the average cost of the TBCC unit was $2.75. In other words, the TBCC unit is known as the traditional treatment for German cockroach consisted of monthly baseboard and crack and crevice treatment you, by using spray and dust formulation the integrated pest management treatment, IPM, involved the initial vacuuming of apartment, followed by a monthly or quarterly application of bait and insect growth regulator devices. Guess what? That is the same device we use, which is point source. Where do you think I got it? Cockroach populations in the IPM treatments were also monitored with sticky traps. You got a guy coming in for maybe two to three minutes spraying all the baseboards, in most apartments, they're spraying only the kitchens and the bathroom, charging $1 to $2, while IPM is $14.60. That is a substantial difference. That is what? Like 6X? 2 times 6? 12? Right around there, 6 times more. Whereas the strategy... Of the TPC was too, uh, in, in the second month treatment, the average cost of IPN was still significantly greater than the TBCC cost. However, after month four, the cost of the two treatments were no longer significantly different because many of IPM apartments were moved to a quarterly treatment schedule. So now going in a quarterly, you're still doing about, you're not doing the vacuuming, you're not doing all this. It reduces the time you're in there. To evaluate long-term costs of the two treatments over the entire technician time and product quantities were averaged over all units uh, within 12 months and test period total 600 units per treatment. The average cost per unit of the IPM treatment was 406. So it was still double. And here is the reality of where the rubber meets the road. You've got landlords saying, I'm not going to pay $14 a unit for two to three months when I'm paying $1.50 to $3 a unit now. But you still have roaches. They're still infested. I took over a condo association where this was the case. It were totally infested with roaches. It took me six months to identify where the point source was, it wasn't where they thought. It was at the ones that were infesting the units was not related to the trash room. It was related to one apartment that got infested and up and down and around that area, another six to nine units out of 120 were completely infested. Once we eliminated that problem, nobody else had any issues. So where are we now? When somebody has an issue, they call immediately. We're there inspecting, monitoring, and making sure that nothing gets out of control again. And now we got rid of the problem in the trash room where, where there were tens of thousands of roaches, and they had a company spraying every month. Didn't you just flush all that money down the drain? By not getting control, you have the illusion because you're complying. You're telling your tenants, there can't be no roaches because we're spraying every month. That you have a false sense of security. You have the illusion of control because spray and chemical does not equal control. Control equals control. Now, the average, look at here, the average cost was significantly greater than the TBCC treatment at $1.50 per unit. Although the TBCC was significantly less expensive than the IPM treatment, it was also less effective 
Trap's catch data indicated that the TB CC treatment had little, if any, effect on cockroach population over the course of the year. Cockroach populations in the TB CC treatment remained steady at the first five months end of the test, and th- I'm sorry, the first five months of the test, and then had threshold increase during the summer. Cockroach populations in the IPM treatment significantly were reduced from the average of 24.7 cockroaches per unit before treatment to an average of 3.9 cockroaches per unit. The suppressed cockroach population of minus five or greater than five per unit IPM treatment remained consistent for the remaining eight months of the test. So spray and pray for you guys that are owning apartments and rentals. It's not going to control your population. That $1.50 per unit sounds great on paper. You can take that back to your management and your boss and your HOA and says, we got a great deal on pest control. We got that guy down to $1.50 a unit. Unfortunately, what you don't know is you guys will be living with roaches for the rest of your life. Let's go over here. Hotelier. Sure, I'll accept your cookies. Why not? I wish they actually would give me cookies. Oh, going green with pest management. Hmm. Hotelier magazine. And there is the Orkin guy. An effective IPM program can earn lead credits and increase sustainability efforts. Wait, lead? Yes, because they're lead green buildings. One way hotel properties can address sustainability is by earning leadership in energy and environmental design, which is what LEED stands for. Certification from the U.S. Green Building Council, USB, USGBC, the national standard bearer for green building leadership. This is the national standard for green building. And all we did was look at their IPM protocol and said, How do we develop this for every home? We are green. See? We can say we're green. Because green, the council has set up criteria to earn certification through hotel design, construction, and renovation operational practices. Consumer interest and environmental issues continue to rise. With the term like green, organic, and sustainable appearing in mission statements, company goals, and business plans everywhere, not to mention product labels. Today, consumers want the brands they buy to truly embrace sustainable initiatives that improve our planet and collective history. The hospitality industry is no exception. It's becoming increasingly difficult to attract guests without environmental sound practices. We are green from the ground up, ladies and gentlemen. I designed this company to be green based on all of this. And what does the industry do? Scoff at me. And what do they do? They call me a chemophobe. And yet, they're supposed to be practicing this. It doesn't get any better, folks. Oh, wait, let's get into quality assurance and food safety. USDA Organic. Organic pest management, a natural extension of IPM. Organic pest management is a natural extension of IPM. So when a customer calls me and says, the way we treat your home is the same way we would treat an organic facility. How do I know this? Because I do certified organic facilities. And this is how we do it. And I'm going to show you the protocol. Although the standard of the USDA National Organic Program, NOP, does not prohibit all uses of pesticides, such as application, is to be a treatment of last resort with prevention, sanitation, exclusion, and physical and mechanical eradication taking place, which is what we do in every evaluation of every home. We asked the customer, what is exclusion? Nobody knows. Do you practice exclusion? No, they don't give us enough time to practice exclusion. We have to go, go, go. You see, folks, 
the NOP does not specifically mention IPM in section 205. Well, here, let's let me go back over here. This this is a very similar, in fact, to the steps in the steps of integrated pest management IPM program, which can provide the foundation for organic management. So we took it a step further and we introduced borates, a lot of borates, into our protocols to comply with the NOP standard, which is boric acid. Well, NOP does not mention in 205.271 facility pest management practice standards does state an organic facility must use management practice to prevent pests, including but not limited to, listen to this, removal of pest habitat, food sources, and breeding areas, prevention of access to handling facilities, and to management of environmental factors. What does that mean? You know, Bobby Corrigan says that exclusion is rodent control. Hmm. Let's get over here, folks. Here is what has to be done in 205-271 Facilities Pest Management Standard Practice. I'm going to bring this up on the screen. And I'm going to show you what has to be. This is the section for, oh, I lost right here. There we go. Hope you guys can see all that. The producer or handler of an organic facility must use management practices to prevent pests, included but not limiting to, listen to this, removal of pest habitat, food sources, and breeding areas. So we get to a home and they got a rodent problem, and there is the bowl of food for the pet. We got to tell that customer, listen, you cannot leave that bowl of food for Fifi. Because Fifi, but she needs to eat during the day. No, she doesn't. You can put the food out. She can eat it, remove the food, and Fifi will eat again when Fifi is her feeding time. Oh, no, she likes eating all day long because Fifi told you this. Removal of pest habitat, food sources, and breeding areas. Number two, prevention of access to the handling facility. Exclusion. Management of environmental factors, just as temperature, light, humidity, atmosphere, air circulation to prevent pest production. Whenever I get called to a home that's loaded with silverfish, we've got a humidity problem. Because you have, here's what happens. You have a little old lady in a home. She's 85 years old and she's cold all the time. You can't tell her to turn on the air conditioner. Because now she has to wear a winter coat in her house because she's freezing. So she turns off the air conditioner during the summer. You have 85% humidity and 85 to 95% temperatures, and she is still cold. Guess what? Roaches and silverfish, and then she's got a crawl space and a septic tank. And on top of that, she's hoarding because she doesn't want to get rid of anything. This is the reality of pest control dealing with all these psychological issues. In a facility, I tell the quality assurance manager, listen, your employee left that door open, a rat's going to get in, and an inspector's going to come, and you're going to get written up. I suggest you tell that employee he's not allowed to go smoke anymore and leave that door propped open where flies are getting in. And guess what? It's done. Not in a home. You can't tell people in their home what they're going to do. That is the major challenge that we have with IPM. This is the reality, folks. Management of environmental factors, uh, test, pests may be controlled through the mechanical or physical control, including but not limited to light traps or sound or lures and repellents using non-synthetic or synthetic substances consistent with the national list. I'm going to put this monitor here. You know what we do in every home? We take that 72 monitor, big, big monitor board, not the little thing you wrap up and you put it underneath the sink. No, we take this big monitor board and we put boric acid bait on it. We take Niban or Intisten or Mother Earth or whatever. And we will stick that under the back of the stove. Very low impact product, complies with the list. We will take that and put it under the refrigerator we will take that and put it under the dishwasher, under the wine 
cooler. And guess what? We catch American roaches that the customer never sees. This is why we can treat every home like a facility because we use these practices. We seal that home. We seal underneath every pipe. Some states you can't. Fire marshal says you can't. I get it. But when you can, what about excluding the outside? Why are you puffing dust into a hole every single month for the next 20 years of that home when you could have simply sealed it and not have to puff any more dust in there? What is it with technicians that they can't think in terms of every single month you're taking the time to puff into that little hole around that water spigot? If you took a caulk gun and you closed it, isn't that more time efficient and more profitable than the time you wasted every single month puffing into that hole where you're repeating the same process over and over? When you look at lean and lean management, wouldn't it make more sense to seal that hole from a company cost perspective of profitability than having your technician continuously do the same thing? Yeah. If the practice provides for a for for in paragraphs A and B, these sections are not effective to prevent or control pests. A non-synthetic or synthetic substance considered with the national list may be applied. So if you've already sealed, you've excluded, you've put traps out, you've baited, then you can use a product that is synthetic or not, and that includes baiting. If the practice provides, and then you read this, and you read this whole thing, and you're like, okay, that's IPM. Here is an actual of one of my facilities, the actual form, and I'm going to show you something here. What we have to comply with, we cannot apply anything to this facility under the rule. And if we do, we have to ask for it in writing before we can apply the chemical after we've done all this. And when the facility manager fails to do it, we write it in our report, which this is the report that they got to submit. They got to comply with all of this on a quarterly basis with their association, with their, in this case, is the Americept International, NOP Organic Canada's Plan Annual Update. Who manages pest control, the activity? We had to submit this in writing and tell them what we were going to use and how we were going to perform pest control before we were allowed to do it. And they got an okay. And we had to supply a list of all the chemicals and all the active ingredients beforehand. And we had to do this and fill all this out. And then we got to provide a report every time we do. 90% of our time is inspecting that facility and not applying anything. If there is no pest problem, there's nothing found in monitors, nothing observed, there is nothing to treat. That is how we reduce pesticide exposure, folks. The customer in the home, when we have to go into a home, we have to educate every single customer on what it is that we do as a company in order to help them understand that we can't switch from a synthetic to a 25B product and solve your problems because that is what the customer has in their mind. And we have to educate that customer. And what happens, Frank, if the customer doesn't accept that? They're not a fit for us. They got to go to a traditional pest control company, which is what they want. And fortunately for them, there's over 400 in Miami. And they can have their choice of what they want if they're not willing. Because if they called us, is because we've done our job at branding and marketing with understanding what is organic, organic facility certified integrated pest management solutions that we provide for a client, we don't spray mint oil, which is what some companies have branded themselves as in this market. We spray mint oil and we solve your problems. That's not what we do. 
We educate the end consumer. We are educating now the prospect. We're not educating the customer. We're pre-educating. And what is it going to take? It's going to take a thousand videos like this to educate America on what eco-friendly IPM, natural pest control, green pest control, organic pest control really is. And that's where I'm going. So once we've done that, then we looked at it and said, okay, I had this study from way back. Faith and I discussed it. We were there. Here is, does the general public relate to the term integrated pest management? Well, the short answer is no, they don't. 50 years of integrated pest management training in universities, the government publishing millions of pages on it, doesn't show up on the first page of Google when a customer is looking for organic or natural pest control, which is what they want. Or that is what they think they want. So the first 10 hundred pages is nothing but marketing and this stuff gets buried and nobody ever sees it. You're writing a lot of great stuff, Faith. Unfortunately, the end customer is never going to see it. Why? Because the average technician never reads it and isn't educated on it. And therefore, he can't educate the end consumer. This is why we got to go on mass media and social media and do a hundred of these videos, a thousand of these videos over the next 10 years across seven social media platforms that exist now at scale seven times a day to get the word out, which is what national pest management should be doing. Because why not? I mean, what, what, did, what did the... What did the, the milk industry do when they needed to promote milk? They came up with a campaign called Got Milk. And they sold everyone on the idea that milk was good and they needed to drink it. When the whole market went low fat, what did they do with all that fat? They created California cheese. See, they understand marketing. Unfortunately, who's on the boards? of all these, of NPMA, is the top brass that controls all the companies or the mass market in the company. So where are we at? We're creating our own thing, totally separate from NPMA. We're doing our own thing because they have a green program that was developed. How many technicians are taking or see the value in it? Not a whole lot. But they did create it. I give them credit for that. So we conducted a random... No, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. This is in California, by the way, where this is green county, green country, where they're all about the environment. UC Berkeley, one of the greatest entomology departments that I get most of my information from, publishes a million articles on this. We conducted a random telephone survey of single family residents in San Diego County to gather public opinion related to the, to the use of the term integrated pest management or its abbreviation, IPM. Only a small percentage of participants, 4.9%, had heard of the term or its abbreviation. When various definitions of IPM were suggested, individual preferred terms stressing environmental or human safety, such as earth-friendly pest management and responsible pest management. Our survey results show that IPM educators should use different terminology when working on non-professional gardeners, working with non-professional gardeners or public in general in order for the audience to relate to IPM concepts. Well, obviously, nobody has done this since this study was done, which was in, when was this done? Here's my thing. Well, over here it is. Over the last 50 years, the use of IPM broadened to include pest. And you can read this. It's a fabulous study, by the way. I highly recommend. They got all the data in here of what they did. But I'm looking at the published date. Oh, February 11 of 2011. February of 2011. This study was done. I wonder what it would be like now if they did it again. Well, they have. There's a bunch of studies all over the country um, that have been done, and it's ranging anywhere between, to like Massachusetts probably and New York have the highest understanding of IPM, but they did the, the surveys 
in agricultural areas. Here's the sad part. Only 30% of agricultural people understood IPM in those studies. These are professionals. So now, this is California. SF for the environment. The strictest standards in pest control are in San Francisco. Where did we get our protocols from? SF environment. We studied all this. Integrated pest management is an important component of green buildings. Inappropriate pest management approaches can degrade the indoor air quality and induce asthma or other hazards and may result in inadequate control of pests. For these reasons, IPM is included in the U.S. Green Building Council's 2009 lead for the existing buildings and operations and maintenance lead EBOM certification. So buildings that have been converted to LEED have a lot of deficiencies that have to be corrected, and they've got protocols for that. This is ideal for our homes because this is what we inherit. So LEED, San Francisco for the environment, and yet in California, in San Diego County, of the sample they took, only 4.9% knows what the heck IPM is. Green pest management practice... Uh, Practices for Sustainable Buildings, a critical view. I'm not going to read this to you. I recommend that you read that study. Consumer Response to Integrated Pest Management Certification. Consumer Awareness, again, Massachusetts. What was the percentage there? 19%. Have ever heard of IPM before the survey, and only 38% of those could mention specific methods used in IPM, although 45% of the respondents initially said they did not care how their food was grown. 85% said that they would prefer to buy IPM-certified sweet corn after hearing short definition. Again, guys, consumer behavior is what we need to influence. There's another study. Now we get into terms. We got IPM. We've got Bobby Corrigan uh, uh, using the term observational biology when it comes to rodent management. Well, the problem with all these terms is that they're industry terms. You are now an observational biologist. What do I do? When I go into a home, what do you do? Well, I'm an observational biologist. I just observe nature and things, how things operate. And says, but get out of here. It's not marketable. It's industry terms. The problem is we're taking industry terms and we don't want to, here's the reality. The hardcore guys, none of these people want to be seen as kooks because they are industry leaders. So if they say, why don't we just coin the term green pest management? I'm going to be the laughing stock of the industry. I got to present myself before cities and governments. Bobby Corrigan can't take that risk. I have no reputation to protect, and I can do that. Assessment based pest management of German cockroaches. Deanie Miller. Is this is the term she's using. Where did I get my protocols from to perform our study in the inner city? I got it from this. This is IPM. It has now been labeled assessment-based pest management. This is the same work that Brenner did at the USDA. I am taking all of this and saying, how do I make this marketable? None of these guys can. That's not their job. They're educators. They're in a system that has boxed them in and said, you can't color outside the lines because if you do, uh, the university's reputation is at stake and we get so many millions of dollars to do certain things. You can't make IPM popular because that's not your job. Your job is to produce this for me 
to then be able to translate it into something that is marketable and train my people on it. That is the sole purpose. And when you're trying to do something outside of your scope, you're going to fail and the failure rate is high because the system doesn't allow you to do that. You need people like me on your side. And this is why I tend to gravitate more to the academics part. And I try to do more teaching and training, probably because I'm a teacher and trainer by, by DNA versus why don't I just go to another conference where they're going to talk to me about their product and how to apply it. This is the cream of the crop that reads this, the top 1% of pest control people in the country. That's who I'm targeting to be allies with. The top 1% of the brass in the pest control industry. Because the average technician has never read this and never will read this much material. If I gave my technician, my stack, my stack of paper would be about two feet tall of what I consumed in literature in the last nine to 10 years. It'd probably be two to three feet in depth. 75 studies alone on 25B products from all over the world. Understanding all types of different pests that it can be used on, where it was tested, how it was tested, and then how do I apply that into the field? So now we've got that and we have enhanced industry vocabulary. The problem is we're speaking pest Genese. And the customer doesn't understand this. And we keep talking pest Chinese, thinking that if we talk pest Chinese, the customer is going to respect us so much. And when we dumb it down, well, you're just dumbing down your literature, you know. But see, I'm looking at, I'm customer centric. This is why I am not industry or, and when I say these things, people take it the wrong way, where my job is the end consumer not the industry, and care what the industry thinks about me or care what the industry wants. It's no different than the medical industry saying, let's just, let's just prescribe a bunch of pain medications, and now what do we have? We have an, epi an epi opioid epidemic. What do we have? We have a chemically dependent society, and nobody wants to talk about real chemical reduction, including in California, where there Actual IPM, introduction into agriculture, there's really no incentive to do it. When you look at the literature and tell me if there's a real incentive to do it, this is the stuff I'm talking about. So let's take marketing and let's look from brilliant people that know how to market. This is Centricon. Guess what? This website wasn't written for the pest control professional. This front page is for the homeowner. They figured it out that if you target the homeowner directly, just like the pharmaceutical companies did, by targeting why do we get commercials now? And, and the commercial says, if you're allergic to X product, you should not use it. How the heck do I know as a consumer if I'm allergic to it? I don't have a prescription for it. The doctor has to give it to me. What the heck does that mean anyway? They figure it out, they go after the end consumer and create demand for their product by the end consumer. Why? Because the industry might say, well, we want to do all 100% liquid. We don't want to sell Centricon. They said, when the customer demands it, you will. So here's, here's the branding on Centricon. Centricon is the number one brand in termite protection. Now there's a one next to that. Here's why the Centricon system is, here's why. The Centricon system is scientifically designed to eliminate the entire subterranean termite colony, including its queen. Never had termites keep it that way with Centricon. Well, what do we know about termites? That if you kill the queen, they can produce their own queens. It's not like fire ants. Yet, there's the marketing because that's what the consumer wants to hear. Who came up with this? Right here, 
the number one means Jefferson Associates, Jefferson David Associates, 2008. Who are these guys? Well, let's read about them. Most research companies can deliver the data, but Jefferson Davis Associates makes the data meaningful. And this experience provides a perspective for evaluating findings that is critical in understanding and developing action strategies of value. In other words, we take the data and we put it in words that people can understand because you give them a data dump and their brain shuts down. They take data and turn it into marketing. That's what they're good at. And that is what the industry, the academics hasn't done. If they would all get together, every university in the company, in the country, and say with all the money they have available, let's design an IPM program marketing strategy, just like Got Milk, and turn it into green pest control and say, we're going to educate now the whole world on green pest control and what green pest control is. And within the next five years, if they put that much emphasis behind it, the entire world will know what real pest control is. But here's my sneaky suspicion. 99.99% of them aren't going to do it. So for the next 50 years, we'll still be asking ourselves, what is IPM? When it's been practiced in Europe, where it's practiced all over England, we're very slow because chemicals are very cheap, abundant. And we have a chemically dependent society of instant results and low prices. Who sets the prices in your market? The reality is your competition does. And when they own the market share, they condition the customers of what pest control should cost. The only reason a customer is going to call you is because they failed. And then you have to justify why your price is doubled to three times. And they couldn't solve the problem. This is the boat I'm in. This is the boat you're in. They're killing each other to go to the lowest possible price, killing each other off while I'm trying to create a blue ocean strategy. Now, if tomorrow they decided we're going to promote green, we're all going to get together. The top 10 companies in America are going to get together and say, guys, we need to have basically a cartel um, like, you know, the, or, or a trade organization and say, we're going green and we're going to teach the world what green is. It get done just like that. My sneaky suspicion though tells me it ain't going to happen. This is why I am doing what I do. This is why I'm going to have a thousand videos out. This is why I'm putting together our own network. This is why I'm going to do my own training because I'm not going to comply with what the industry wants. I'm going to create our own holistic pest control professionals throughout the country and throughout the world. Now do you see the vision? Now do you see where I'm going? He said, that's big. That's doable. But here's what I'm going to do because I'm already giving out. You see it on my personal page, how I'm giving out leads all over the country. We got people calling me wanting this. And sooner or later, NPMA will sit down at the table with me. It might not be now. It might not be in the next year. They will sit at the table with me and discuss how we're going to work together. They're going to come to me. I'm going to get everyone in the industry to come to me. I'm not going to go to them and try to go into their university and tell them how they have to run their university. I'm not going to go in and tell you how to run your pest control business. I'm going to influence the end user. 
I'm going to influence the end user to get the end user to create the demand for green pest control, for holistic pest control. And all we got to do is come together on a term and then all of us, little by little, putting it on our trucks and saying, we belong to the Green Pest Management Association. We belong. We're green industry professionals. See, that's a unique selling proposition where you don't compete on price. You're not competing in a bloody ocean like the rest of the pest control industry because it's consolidating. They're buying up companies left and right and growing at massive rates. We're for that client that really wants the real deal. We can demand then two to three X for it because it's supply and demand. You see, folks. So I hope this is the first of many explanations that I'm going to be given to people of why it is that we're doing what we're doing, why my company does what we do. We do. You see, folks, this is what we're all about. This is what I'm doing. This is where we're going. If you want to come along and you want to play and be a part of this, you can. And if you don't, you don't. I'm making it available to everyone that wants it. I wanted everyone to know where I stand and be clear and transparent with everybody. And you decide if you're going to support me or not. You decide if you're going to be in on this. But here's what will happen. I will build it and they will come. This is Frank the Pest Geek wishing you a spectacular day.